Welcome back to Startup Pack. With my 25 years of development experience, here at Startup Pack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in as little as three months. In today's video, we're exploring the difference between Dapper and Entity Framework using C Sharp. These are two popular data access technologies and they each have their strengths and best use cases and understanding them can greatly enhance your development workflow. We'll break down the key features, performance aspects and scenarios where each shines the most. So whether you're a senior citizen developer or just starting out, this comparison will help you make informed decisions for your projects. And as always, make sure you uh, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll dive in. All right, so we're going to dive in here to Dapper versus Entity Framework. Now, again, we always provide code samples, and we're going to today's not going to be any different. We're going to have a code sample, so make sure you download that. Check out the link down below. Also, if you disagree with something I said, I love a good, healthy debate, so make sure that you uh, comment. I read all the comments and answer them personally. So today we're going to dive in and talk about the difference between Dapper and Entity Framework using C Sharp. Now, these are definitely the two most important popular data access technologies and I'm going to go through and break down some of the key features and why I like some and why I use some in some cases and some in other cases because I really do end up using both in, in a lot of different cases. All right, so right off the bat, Entity Framework Core offers a more extensive and user-friendly experience, especially for beginners. It provides an abstraction layer that handles most of the database interactions for you. On the other hand, Dapper is a micro ORM, meaning it's lightweight and requires you to write your own SQL queries, which I kind of prefer. This makes Dapper a bit more challenging initially, but gives experienced developers more control over their data interactions. And I'll talk a little bit more as we dig through this. Now, as far as performance and speed, Dapper is renowned for, how, for its speed and efficiency. It's often faster than Entity Framework Core because it generates fewer SQL queries and optimizes the data access patterns. And any framework core, while slightly slower, provides a lot of conveniences and advanced features that can save time and development. The choice between the two often boils down to whether you prioritize raw performance or development speed. Now, the flexibility and control, and when it comes to flexibility, Dapper shines by allowing developers to write raw SQL queries. This means you can optimize these queries to fit specific needs, which can lead to better performance. Any framework core, however, restricts you to using link query link for queries, which, it, while it's powerful, can sometimes be less efficient. If you need fine-grained control over your data op database operations, Dapper might be the better choice. So in a lot of case, I see junior developers use link, and they'll pull back entire data sets where they don't know, and then they'll continue to use link queries and chain off of it. And as they do that, they may be bringing back way more data than they need from the database, and therefore a really poorly performing one. Whereas with SQL, you see exactly what you're seeing. You can write it in uh, whatever data access tool you like, my, like Microsoft SQL Management Studio. I personally use Data Grip. Um, and while you use those, um, you can get your query really tuned and optimized. And so that's why I really like the flexibility that comes with, data, with Dapper. Another one here is the feature set and capabilities. Enter, any framework is packed with features like change tracking, complex mapping, and lazy loading. These features can significantly simplify the development process. Um, one of the big reasons that I use Entity Framework is if you're going to use ASP.NET Identity Service. If you're going to use Identity Service, you're pretty much stuck with using Entity Framework because uh, it just like trying to do that yourself with Dapper would just be a total nightmare. So Dapper, while being a minimalist, uh, lacks some of these advanced features, but it excels in its simplicity. So there's a lot of bloat that can also come with Entity Framework as well. So that's where I really like Dapper as well. Now, there's lots of different community support for both. So I think this is a tricky one to really talk, talk about wh one more than the other. Uh, I think you know we're saying here that Dapper has less support, but I don't know if there's a pretty passionate uh, user base out there. All right, so let's dive into some code here, and we can kind of show you some examples. So here's a really simple example of Dapper, right? So we're going to get a task of with an I enumerable or a list of products. So in order to get all products, you can write a really simple select star from products. But again, it, let's pretend this was a really complex join with a lot of different um, uh, a lot of different things you could optimize. This was, this was a three table join. Like those kind of things are where Entity Framework is going to really struggle in some cases. But you'll be able to perform that query, then drop it in here, um, have it run the query, and it will return just a list of uh, product objects. 
and you can call query async, and this is all the more that it takes. The other part that I really like about Dapper is I like having the SQL uh, changes here in the code. I am definitely not a fan of stored procedures or of data, uh, of queries living in the database. It's a nightmare to maintain. Here I love seeing all those change sets. Uh, then you can see these in the change sets when the data access changes. So you can see here, and you can see that this is a pretty full-fledged, um, I'm going to drag my, drag my head down just a little bit here so you can see more of the, of the project. But um, the, uh, you can see here that the, you know, this is a full-fledged project, so pull it down. Make sure you check out the link down below. We give code samples. There's hundreds of code samples, so when you pull down the repository, I think this is like 205 or 207 or something like that. And um, even before that, there's another link to previous one where I think there's another 300 code samples. Tons of code samples here, and you'll see lots about Dapper in any framework. Um, and so this is a, a really good example here, a very simple, simple example of Dapper. Now in this class, we can see an example of where we're using uh, Entity Framework. And so here in this case, you can see that we pass in the context and the repository. We then can very simply just say products.list to async, right? And this is going to get us all the products. Um, from that. We can also say get all products, right? And this will then get us all those products. So um, again, very simple way uh, for us to be able to then uh, use and you can see the entity framework is super simple for us to be able to get this and then we just return the view. So very easy way for us to use this entity framework core and you can see that it's really quite powerful in doing a lot of that with just a couple lines of code. So overall, that's what we have today. Again, make sure you pull down the code sample. I'm not going to go through all of it with you because there's a ton of different code in there. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you prefer Dapper? Do you prefer uh, Entity Framework? Let me know. I re read and review all the comments. Here at Startup Pack, well, we love to have a good discussion about software. We love to train software developers. And with my 25 years of development experience, we take people with zero experience and help to train them to be ready to start as an intern, as a full stack developer in as little as three months. So make sure to check us out. Go to startuppack.com today. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.